Welcome to our uh, deep dive into the world of global health and medical innovations. You've been looking into some really interesting stuff uh, from outbreaks of Marburg virus and MPOX to uh, those amazing advances in bioelectric medicine and AI in healthcare. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, a lot to sort through, a real mix of serious challenges and remarkable breakthroughs, all happening at once, really. It is. So you've been reading about that Marburg virus outbreak in Rwanda. 66 cases and 15 deaths already. It is a, a serious situation for sure. And and it's related to Ebola, right? That's kind of scary. Yeah. So why is this virus causing so much concern? Well, the fatality rate for Marburg, it can be um, up to 90 percent. And there's no there's no specific treatment right now. Yeah. So early supportive care is the best approach we have, which makes rapid response and containment absolutely crucial. So I see the UK's already issued travel advisories, which shows just how seriously they're taking it. Hmm. You also have some research on uh, the MPOX situation. Yeah. How does that compare to what's happening with Marburg? So MPOX is another serious concern. And the World Health Organization uh, declared it a global health emergency uh, back in August. There's this new variant, uh, Clade Ebb. It's been spreading, and it can spread more easily than previous variants. Mm -hmm. What's different is we're seeing it in countries all over the world. It's not just in Africa. Oh, wow. That's a really good point. It highlights how global health is interconnected. So what's alarming is that there have been over 46,000 suspected cases of MPOX and over 1,000 deaths. I think a lot of people assume that it wasn't as severe, but it clearly is. There, Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of misconceptions about MPOX. While it is true that most cases are in Africa, it's not an African problem, right? Right. This new variant is spreading quickly. It's just a reminder that infectious diseases they don't really respect borders. So we've got these two pretty scary outbreaks happening right now. Are there any uh, any good signs on the horizon? What's science doing to try to combat these viruses? Well, there's some promising news for MPOX, at least. Vaccines from Bavarian Nordic and KM Biologics have been approved for emergency use. Yeah. Which which should help to curb the spread. Oh, that's good news. It seems like we're just always battling these uh, emerging threats. It makes you wonder. Are these outbreaks becoming more common? You know, that's a question that a lot of researchers are asking. Yeah. Some scientists believe that things like uh, climate change, deforestation, and just more global travel are creating more opportunities for viruses to jump from animals to humans. It's almost like a, like a warning, isn't it? Yeah. Reminding us how closely tied human health is to the health of our planet. Exactly. And it really underscores the importance of investing in public health infrastructure, and disease surveillance globally. Okay, well, let's shift gears a bit from the uh, doom and gloom and talk about some of the exciting innovations happening in medicine. You've been reading about bioelectric medicine, and this stuff seems straight out of science fiction. Yeah. So can you explain what it is? Why is it generating so much excitement? Well, it's a really fascinating field. Essentially, bioelectric medicine is uh, it's using the body's own electrical signals to communicate with the nervous system. So imagine like tiny implanted electrodes that can stimulate specific nerves. Mm -hmm. And that can be used to treat a whole range of conditions. And there was that amazing story you shared with me about Northwell Health in New York. They're using bioelectric medicine to help paralyzed patients regain movement. That's right. They were able to help a patient uh, regain movement and feeling in his paralyzed hand. And the hope is that one day this technology will be like portable so people can use it in their everyday lives. Wow, that's that's incredible to think about the possibilities for people with spinal cord injuries or other conditions that that affect movement. This technology could be absolutely life changing for so many people. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not just about uh, restoring movement. Researchers are also looking into how bioelectric medicine could be used to treat chronic pain, inflammation, even some types of cancer. It seems like the potential applications are just limitless. Yeah, it's really exciting. What other exciting developments are you seeing in this field? Well, we're also seeing some incredible advancements in prosthetics, mm -hmm. like um, the Senses Bionic Leg, which was developed by a French company. Oh, yeah. I read about that. That one's pretty amazing. It's not just a prosthetic. It actually, like, interacts with the user's nervous system. Right? Exactly. The integration of these devices is getting uh, more and more sophisticated, you know. Yeah. Allowing for more natural and intuitive movement. It's really blurring the line between between human and machine. It's incredible. It seems like science is constantly pushing the boundaries of what's possible. But I have to admit, some of these advancements, especially in the field of AI, makes me a little uneasy. It's all moving so fast. Where do we go from here? It's true. The pace of innovation can feel overwhelming at times. But 
I think it's important to remember that technology itself isn't inherently good or bad. It's it's how we choose to use it, you know. That's a great point. Yeah. So let's dive into the world of AI and explore its potential and perhaps its perils in healthcare. You've been looking into this quite a bit. What are some of the key applications of AI that are transforming the medical landscape? Well, AI is making its presence felt all across healthcare, mm. from diagnostics and treatment personalization to administrative efficiency. It's an incredibly powerful tool that has the potential to, to revolutionize how we approach medicine. One area where AI seems to be making huge strides is in uh, diagnostics. I was reading about how AI algorithms can interpret medical images, you know, like MRIs and CT scans with incredible accuracy, mm -hmm. sometimes even surpassing human doctors. Is that is that really possible? Could AI eventually become better at diagnosing diseases than than trained physicians? Well, it's it's definitely a possibility. AI algorithms can analyze huge amounts of data and spot patterns that a human eye might miss. They can, you know, learn from thousands and thousands of images and constantly improve their accuracy. So it's not about replacing doctors entirely. It's uh -huh. more about giving them a powerful new tool. Yeah. AI can help doctors make more informed decisions. To enhance their diagnostic abilities. Right. But in the end, it's the doctor's expertise and judgment that'll guide the, the diagnosis and treatment plan. Human oversight is still essential. That makes sense. What about the idea of AI personalizing treatment? I was reading about this uh, project called Two Stroke Stroke, mm -hmm. and they're using AI to try to optimize stroke care. How does that work? Well, it's it's pretty amazing. AI can analyze a patient's medical history, genetics, lifestyle factors, even their response to previous treatments to come up with a highly personalized treatment plan. Mm -hmm. It's like having a super smart assistant helping doctors, you know, tailor the best approach for each individual patient. It sounds like something right out of a sci-fi movie. But I do wonder about the potential downsides. Could AI-driven healthcare create uh, new inequalities? What if this personalized medicine is only available to the wealthy? That's that's a really important point. As we embrace all these technological advancements, we need to make sure they benefit everyone, not just a select few. Issues of accessibility and affordability are key here so yeah. that everyone can, you know, benefit from these innovations. Absolutely. We need to make sure AI and healthcare doesn't just make existing disparities worse. That it helps us create a more equitable and just healthcare system. I agree. It's a conversation we need to be having right now as these technologies are being developed and implemented. We need to think carefully about the social and ethical implications and make sure we're using these tools responsibly. It seems like AI has the potential to be both incredibly beneficial and and potentially problematic if we're not careful. It's a lot to consider. It is. It really is. But I think that's why it's so important to stay stay informed and stay engaged. These advancements are going to have a big impact on all of us, and we need to be part of the conversation about how they're developed and used. So what you're saying is we can't just sit back and let technology shape our future. We need to actively participate in, in shaping the future we want. Exactly. We all have a role to play. Well, you've certainly given us a lot to think about today. We've gone from those alarming outbreaks of Marburg and Impox to the incredible possibilities of bioelectric medicine and AI in healthcare. It's a wild ride. Yeah, it's a fascinating time to be alive. We're seeing some incredible scientific breakthroughs that could really transform human health. But, but with these advancements come important questions about how we navigate this, this new landscape ethically and responsible, making sure that everyone benefits. Absolutely. We need to be very thoughtful about how we harness the power of these technologies to create a, a, a healthier, more equitable future for all. What an amazing deep dive this has been. It's clear that global health and medical innovation are they are linked in some really complex ways. They are. And it's a constantly evolving landscape, so it's crucial to stay informed and engaged. So before we wrap things up, is there one key takeaway you'd like our listener to hold on to from our conversation today? I think the, the most important thing is to remember that we're not just, you know, passive observers in this in this technological revolution. Oh, right. We all have the power to to shape how these advancements unfold. Right. And to make sure that they're used to benefit humanity. I love that. We uh. we have agency. It's not just about watching science happen. It's about actively participating and shaping the future we want to see. Exactly. And that starts with staying curious, asking questions and having those thoughtful dialogues about these issues. Yeah, it's it's easy to feel overwhelmed by all of this. Like the future is just coming at us and we and we have no control. But but what I'm hearing from you is that we 
we do have a voice. We do. We can be informed. We can engage in these conversations and we can advocate for the kind of future that we want to see. Yeah, absolutely. The decisions that we make today about how these technologies are developed and implemented are going to have like ripple effects for, for generations to come. It really makes you think about all the potential breakthroughs that could be just around the corner. What if they figure out how to how to regrow limbs yeah. or develop a cure for Alzheimer's? What if what if AI can predict and prevent diseases even before they start? It's it's both exciting and and a little scary to imagine what the future holds. It is. It really is. And it brings us back to that point we've been talking about, the importance of responsible innovation. We need to be thinking about not just what we can do, but what we should do, you know, right. what are the ethical implications of all these advancements? How do we ensure they benefit, you know, all of humanity, not just a select few? Yeah, it's a lot to consider, but it's a conversation we need to be having. The future of healthcare is is literally being shaped right now. Exactly. And it's a future that we can all help shape by staying informed. Yeah. By engaging in these conversations, by, you know, demanding that these technologies are de developed and used ethically and responsibly. We can create a future where healthcare is more equitable, more effective, and more accessible for everyone. This has been an incredible deep dive. We've explored, you know, the reality of emerging infectious diseases, the mind-blowing potential of bioelectric medicine and prosthetics, and the transformative but sometimes unsettling power of AI in healthcare. It's a lot to process, but it's also incredibly empowering to realize that we, we all have a role to play in shaping this future. It really has been a fascinating journey, and I hope this deep dive has provided you with some some valuable insights and, and a renewed sense of curiosity about the, the ever-evolving world of global health and medicine. So to everyone listening, stay curious, stay engaged, and stay hopeful. The future is in our hands.